Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Tale of Toast has released a free Linux RPG that nobody can log into. It's kind of brilliant and blaze it will bring, hopefully, arcade racing goodness to the Linux. Hashtag 420, hashtag YOLO. Steam controller is getting a kernel driver. Now I can finally stop Googling for UDEV rules. And Upmon got a skirt coffee, right? I know. It's my destiny. Do you feel like scouring the depths of Steam for a good game? No? Well, uh, someone put together a list for you. And Humble brings home the classics, or at least games which, quote-unquote, borrow heavily on those classics. I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Actual, switching the bets, doing the nightmare fuel, this beautiful train of, um, horribleness. Linux goodness, all with the penguin sauce, joined every week by our Toronto bureau chief, one master Sfeng, and the man from the island in Britannia. That is Pedro Montes. No, that's, that's naughty. <laughs> and together with Shed Realm Dynamic, helping us form that last most special little bit, known as Cocaine Voltron. Take us down, YouTube. Um, before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life, organs. Uh, Jordan, I heard uh, you had to uh, get something fixed like thursday ah yeah it was a it was a bit of a work emergency it's um it's what pushed the stream back by about an hour but it got resolved and the moral of the story is um make sure your reproducible builds are actually reproducible also i got this fancy new camera right oh, here shit. should like stop with the with the blurring as soon as i smudge it up with my finger <laughs> lick it lick it <laughs> What's up, B-Baby? <laughs> well, over here, it's uh, it's been a quiet week. I, I've been sort of kind of rushing to get Nori's uh, birthday gift ready. And I've already handed it to her because it is technically the 25th over here. So run to Nori. Uh, she's on Facebook. She's on Twitter, I think, as well. So go wish her a happy birthday. <laughs> Not a whole lot to so, so stock Pedro's girlfriend. On the yeah. <laughs> That, that's it. I just walk up to Nori and be like, I heard you move around a lot. Um, and just leave it at that and walk <laughs> off, man. Just, just tap out, walk off. It'll be brilliant. Uh, the modem showed up. It showed up on Vince Day. That was, that was definitely a thing. We learned that not even I'm dumb enough with only five minutes to try to get a uh, modem activated, but it has definitely stabilized our half gig connection to the interpipes, the intertubes. And hopefully everything's going to be nice and blam and disconnect. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so that's definitely a thing uh, let, let, let's just go ahead and uh, smack around Mr. Uh, horsey face uh, I thought you were going to smack around me I was getting all excited my nipples were primed and ready for action <laughs> it's the steam Medics. update of the world yeah so uh, we don't have 350 because we're not sea monsters but we have maybe some 250 250 top Linux games. Uh, so the guys uh, at Steam 250 have literally gone out of their way to go on the, uh, on the Steam API, pull down all the games, sort them by reviews, number of reviews, like averaged out which got the better scores, and they ranked them. And they also have the Linux list, obviously. Uh, top 250, there will be links for all of that in the show notes, don't worry. You can also filter at the top of the website. Uh, so let's say they have a couple of uh, custom lists that they do. And you can just filter those by OS if you want. And uh, actually, the dudes behind this uh, sent us an email a while back. And uh, while I, when I replied, said, yeah, sure, we'll talk about it. Uh, can you tell us more? And they said, we provide a collection of video game rankings based on a wide selection of nuanced criteria. It's the review scores. Uh, mm -hmm. To match what gamers are looking for. Steam 250 aims to provide all the tools necessary to be the one-stop shop for finding good games on Steam. So basically, if you don't want to go basically swimming through the cesspool that is Steam nowadays and you just want to find good games, there it is. Hmm. Someone did the work but, for you. But, pa but, pa but Pedro, the, the, the curator pages and, 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 and the Steam graphs. And the, I mean, we will I talk mean, the, about the, that the, in a moment. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, it, it's kind of neat because you can see like review scores rising and falling. I scroll to the bottom here. Apparently, number number four on the uh, faller today is Seum Speedrunners from Hell. Oh man, you remember that mm-hmm. one? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but most of most of the games you see on here is stuff that we've actually covered. Uh, stuff that you'd usually expect. Yep. Got your FTL, your portals, your um, Left 4 Dead's. Your binding of Isaacs, all the all the stuff that you probably already own, anyways. But it might be neat if you're looking through this and saying, "Oh, you know, I I, I heard of that this game, or I, I remember hearing it." And no, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe it's time to go check it out. I, I definitely mm-hmm. agree with all of that, and you got to got to admit this: anything's better than like the Steam homepage of suggestions of like, "What the hell, really?" Because <laughs> it's a mixture of shit you already own, followed by stuff that. This is what your friends play. You know, they have horrible taste in games. That should be an option, Steam. Throw that in there. Um, the Smurf the, is the, back the, in the... the, the, the my, I was just going to say the My Friends Suck tick box. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's coming up next. Yeah. Uh, coming up next, um, Valve is shipping out, or I guess HTC is uh, shipping out, some uh, Vive Pros to uh, partnered developers. Uh, Alchemy Labs is uh, one of them. They were the guys who uh, did Job Simulator. So this is so it looks like uh, Valve wants people to start uh, putting this uh, new VR headset through its paces. Um, but then you had a you had a question though that I think is true is really valid. Is, yeah, um, man. Um, one thing I was really thinking about because I think we saw better than what we expected adoption with Gen mm-hmm. One vibes because we saw the numbers mm-hmm. and it was over hundred thousand. Like, huh? You know, we said that you'll see the same amount of people roughly who own complete racing setups with a wheel, pedals, and all that as you would with um, VR, you know, be it HTC Vive or the Oculus. Not PSVR doesn't really count because that's like the Fisher Price of VR show title. Um, (laughs) This, you got to wonder because they've already said they're probably going to be coming out at about 1,000 wet, stinky American caches for this piece of kit. And if I'm a developer, I'm sitting back going, okay, so like if, if you're into VR and you've already dropped like 800, this comes out a thousand. What are you looking at? Like adoption, like 18 to 20% of the existing base to do that. Would, <laughs> would I really no. be targeting this 2k experience and, or is this going to put a lot of developers in a position to where they're going to have like standard version and enhanced edition? Well, they they had this problem with like uh, the the PlayStation Four to to bring that up, where uh, the PS Four Pro came out and it was like, oh, brand new hardware is going to improve all the performance of your games, and then all the shit ran like ass, and you had to switch uh, the PS Four Pro into GIMP mode, where it runs like the OG PS Four mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. even like have functional games. I think there's still, I think developers are going to try and target the most widely available VR platform, which in this case would be Oculus, but. Um, <laughs> It, they they probably want like the the they want to sort of aim at the lower end because though that would maybe bring adoption but at the same time though you may want to target the uh, the people who are apparently willing to drop the money on VR and VR experiences so maybe maybe it is a little worthwhile to uh, look at targeting the Vive Pro. Uh, I mean, are the, you the, really the willing is... to put out? Are you willing to put out a product that took as much time and money of R&D as something like a VR freaking headset does for the niche crowd? Is that a safe return on investment, especially when there's currently very little that people can actually do or games that they can actually play in VR? It's... I... I, I don't know, man. I mean, it's early days. We're going to see what plays out. Um, Steam Controller is kind of mm-hmm. kind of sneaking, weaseling its way into the kernel, man. Oh, yeah. This is oh, from uh, the Linux kernel <laughs> mailing list. Uh, Rodrigo Rivas Costa um, is a new <laughs> contributor. Uh, yeah, he... Uh, shut up. He uh, implemented <laughs> a... Um, he, he, he essentially reverse engineered a kernel driver for the Valve Steam controller, um, and uh, they are up. Uh, and he put in the uh, merge request to the kernel, and it looks like they're probably going to accept it. And I mean, this this is a good idea, because honestly, I th- I think the big thing that you the the hard sell that you can 
give for Linux as a gaming platform is it just fucking works. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like with the, with the exception of NVIDIA drivers, uh, these days you plug it in and away you go. And that goes for like PCI hardware, processors, motherboard chipsets, uh, some some AMD video cards. Well, it's something you definitely get used to, man. I mean, you like the idea yeah. of like installing drivers. The fact that we had to do something with UDev rules and open up a text file is like, oh, that's for a controller. What? <laughs> that's bizarre. It's not def mm -hmm. definitely um, a hard thing to do, but you know, I think it's a wicked good thing because it should just be plug and play, right? Yeah, and it was for the most part until Valve decided to add some new functionality to the Steam controller. They made a big firmware update, and, well, they had to change the UDEV rule, and when people downloaded the package, it wasn't really detecting that the UDEV rule needed changing, so there were a lot of people stuck with not working Steam controllers on their Linux boxes because that UDEV rule wasn't getting updated like it should. That was the big problem, and... If the package management was uh, working a bit better at the time, yeah, the whole process would have been invisible because you install the Steam package from the repos or wherever, and it creates the UDEV rule where it needs to be. That would be the ideal scenario. But since we can't really trust that, having it in the kernel, very good idea. Mm -hmm. So uh, curators, we're, we're technical curators. That's the thing, and you, you should ignore us, right? <laughs> well, if you want to ignore us, you can, because as a part of the big curator update that Valve put out a while back, they also introduced the ability to ignore um, cu certain specific curators, or if you actually set uh, the curator suggestions to ignore all, you will get rid of the curator functionality altogether. Which uh, begs the question... Why would you bother even ignoring specific curators? Uh, what kind of bubble do you live in that someone putting out their opinion, which you don't even have to look at, uh, on the Steam Store front? Well, so, uh, the, the 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 whole the whole deal with that though is like they give you a random set of curators to begin with. Maybe there's one you don't like, so you just get it out of your Rex. I mean, that's that's really all this amounts to. Um, or, and I mean, like, maybe, maybe maybe you love the old algorithm. Maybe Steam just, like, throwing a bunch of crap. Hey, man, you want to buy this? Hey, man, you want to buy this? Is <laughs> is what your jam is. And you don't want, like, trustworthy humans, humans like us <laughs> to tell you what you need to buy. I don't know, man. I kind of read that, and it's like, Steam, the curator system, you released it. You you neglected the hell out of it for like two years. Uh, no one no one cares, man. You you're, you're the dude from Jurassic Park. You're like, see, no one cares. Uh, <laughs> Dotson's here. It's, Dotson's here. It's even like uh, even to work off the whole not caring thing. It's on the front page of Steam. Who the hell looks at the front page of Steam anymore? It's just filled with crap. Mm. I don't know, man. But I do know we got a new version of uh, Wormholes, and that's just as kinky oh, yeah. as it sounds. Uh, Worms WMD oh. did get a bit of an update. That was a, a surprise uh, a couple of days ago when I fired up Steam. It's like, oh, Worms is updating. Wait, Worms is updating? That's new. So they introduced a new theme, the Wormhole, and they have new forts. It's just more uh, scenario customization. Uh, you also get some more customization options. There's a Trump wig. Of course there is um for the worms themselves and uh, there's a couple of uh teeny tiny bits and bobs that they added basically all throughout the game what they didn't mention in this particular post were the bugs that they fixed and i couldn't honestly find a change log that had all the bugs that they fixed so, uh so so here, here here's here's a bug they didn't fix it still doesn't fucking launch on fedora hmm Okay. <laughs> yeah. Do you still need to uh, set it to a blank uh, runtime before it'll start? <laughs> no, it it never it never fucking worked. Like period. Hmm. Oh, it's that one. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It's definitely a thing I did notice when I started it up. Now it has like a regular regular run then a run s run sh. It doesn't have yep. any explanation to what it does. Other than mm -hmm. that one actually launches the game on uh, seventeen ten, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you still have to launch it in borderless windowed mode, and 
because if you try to do it in windowed mode, it doesn't have it and you can't resize it. It's still a hot, busted piece of nope. But if you really love worms, you can kind of play it on Linux, man. Uh, not the best piece of kit. Riot, Civil Unrest, Update 13. It is out. And uh, Linux, they kind of fixed it. I like how they put this up top. They say, we fixed the missing executable bug, to which I'll say, hey, Brad, Brad, you know what? Incompetence, not a bug, just because you didn't populate the damn depot when you released the game and you set out Linux support. Um, what is it? You never heard of it. And we can take a look at the store page. It's civil. It's the mob simulator, right? Where you put like one mob against. Yep. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we talked about yeah, this you, 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 Yeah. You, you, you play either as like the mob or the cops and yeah, you, you get like different gameplay based on which one you're playing as. It's early access. Still, still early access. Uh, local multiplayer co-op. Local co-op. Uh, doesn't have a online multiplayer, so we're not terribly interested. Uh, again, let, 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 let's refer you back to the flowchart developers. Mm-hmm. Is it going to have mm-hmm. multiplayer? It should have online multiplayer. That's yeah. the that's the flowchart. Pretty much. <laughs> Farrell's got some more news for us, though, man, and it's not about Tomb Raider. Oh, man. Oh, dude, I fucking called it, too. They're like, oh, man, a new game's on the Feral radar. I'm like, oh, it's another freaking Total War. Yeah. It is another Total War, <laughs> but not quite. This is Total War Saga. It's, it's like Solo, a Star Wars story. Uh, Thrones of Britannia. And essentially what it is, is instead of like broad sweeping campaigns, they take uh, like a, a scenario or like, um, I guess an individual like military campaign and sort of create a military Total War-esque simulation of it that you can play through and pay 30 by $40 when it's not on sale <laughs> for pre-order <laughs> to play. Um, folks, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that if Total War is not your bag, like it's not it's none of our bags. I'd say give nope. a skip. It's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna change your mind. No. Um. I, listen, man, I'm gonna agree with you on that. that it is under. It is that type of game. It's it's like Civ. You either dig it or you don't. It doesn't matter what version or if it's like Total War, or World of Warcraft, or whatever skin pack they put mm-hmm. on the shit. It's still fucking Total War. And I personally, yeah, I agree with you, man. I don't dig it, but hey, some apparently enough people dig it that they keep releasing these, and that's definitely a good that's, thing. Yeah, that's that was my question. It's like, is there a big enough market of Linux people who buy everything Total War branded? And uh, Foxy left a comment on the show notes saying, I do. Okay, so one person does. Uh, prove it. You've heard it here first. Uh, <laughs> or I mean, I maybe, mean Foxy's just maybe. an irresponsible spender, though. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's just the fact that they all use the same engine, so porting it becomes a hell of a lot cheaper. Well, yeah. that's dude. I'll true. use the same. I'll use the same engine. I'm pretty sure it's just a different like map pack file mm. that they load. It, 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 <laughs> it's, listen, man, it's a brilliant business <laughs> model when you think about it. You know, for <laughs> oh, I'm, effectively, I'm, I'm, absolutely, absolutely. Effectively, you have an entire like six games that should have just been one game with a bunch of DLC. Um, I, I kind of just wish they would update it to make it work. Didn't look like something like straight out of like the late nineties. That that alone yeah. <laughs> would kind of make me happy. What do we get up next? Is this station? Up up Ooh. next, this station. Yeah, this this is um. It kind of reminds me of that uh, other game that uh, Fulbright put out. Um, not Gone Home. It was the one after that. I'm drawing a blank on the name. Someone can post that in uh, Shot Realm or Discord or whatever, and I will scream it yes, and be it like, "I totally knew it, you guys." Yeah, uh, but it anyways, was Fulbright, uh, yes. <laughs> no, that's the name. That's the name of the company, not the name of the game. Tacoma, oh, there you uh... go. Thank you, sold that. I totally, I totally knew it, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I told, I told. Anyways, it's it's another one of these um, mystery walk around, uncover the secret past of the space station, atmospheric, story rich, lots and lots of reading, lots and lots of fucking around. Uh, type games so if this is your bag it is out it looks it actually looks pretty decent and if you sort of like sci-fi mysteries with like an ar aesthetic then this is probably going to be something up your alley it has some relatively positive reviews it came out a few days ago and you can pick it up for 1749 um though i will say reading the game description uh it kind the plot kind of reminds me of encounter at farpoint the the star trek next generation premiere and now I just want a game where you play as Q. Man, that would be the shortest <laughs> damn game. I mean, after you get done making singing hot dogs, it's got to be a godsend, right? Yeah. 
Either that or it's like a first person thing where you just poke Picard with a stick while he's trying to sleep. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a Star Trek uh, heathen. I I like Discovery, so yeah. (laughs) That is very, very Orwellian of you. Yeah, well, uh, if you too like the the works of Orwell and you uh, maybe have come to the realization, especially if, if you live in the UK, that it is slowly becoming that Orwellian dystopia you hear so much about, well, maybe you will uh, also enjoy the Orwell series, which is a an episodic game that comes out, and it is for all intents and purposes, a sort of text adventure type thing. You follow the news, you try to figure out what's going on, Uh, you are a government official, uh, and you're basically playing Big Brother to everyone and trying to find out what people are going to do before they do it. And uh, they do say there was one one sentence in the store page that caught my eye, which was... uh... We highly encourage you to purchase the game in the launch window and play the episodes as a release. So basically they're saying, buy everything now and uh, we totally promise we will deliver you guys. Yeah, we've been burned by that before, so if I say buy the uh, regular one, although the complete season, as they call it, is only like a pound more expensive than uh, just the first episode, so... Maybe that's a thing yeah, you'll it's, enjoy. It's, I, I, it, yeah, it's 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 about a buck fifty more Canadian was, but yeah, no, know. it's play as a gaslighting government agents. Um, I mean, it's sort of episodic text adventure. I, it's it's not really my bag, but I mean, it 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 looks decent from like a from like a storytelling perspective. There seems to be like a lot of stuff going around, even though it is it basically looks like you're working at someone's workstation. Mm. Yeah, I don't like, know, man. But I... not, not 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 like a real workstation, like. The, the fake workstations they put up in movies to mm-hmm. make it seem like people are busy. Job simulators. Any, any game that prominently features wheelchair love is all right in my book. So, Tale of Toast, man. It's out. It's free. It's an MMO. And uh, what is it? Uh, pick with easy, pick up to play. Open world player versus player. High stakes. Um, social aspects, trade skills, procedurally generated dungeons. Oh, boy. This is like a checklist of note, but... It's early access, and most importantly, it's free to play. But I got to throw this down. Um, I know Foxy and myself spent quite a bit of time Friday doing this uh, little trick we, we like to call trying to log into your damn game. Um, it, it was not having it, man. I guess it got flooded because, then again, free to play. This is why you do a cover charge at club, not to make money, but some people just won't give you a buck. Um, I... I would like to be able to tell you about it. Maybe I'll remember that it exists next week and try it out. MMOs aren't my, they, aren't my bag, man. They're, they're just not. Uh, this specific one, they were giving out keys a long time ago, like several months ago. Uh, they were giving out keys. I got one. I remember starting it, looking at the uh, combat animations and saying, oh, so you made a PvP-focused MMO with horrible looking combat animations okay i'm just gonna wait till it's out and uh well it's out in early access now and the animations still look like ass so yeah no i thought it's, it's one of those things where like oh the jank is supposed to be charming no it's it's just jank but i it mean just it just looks it, bad. it's free <laughs> yeah that i mean i mean it looks like they're trying to like sort of hybridize the PUBG experience with like a more traditional mmo <laughs> Seems like it could work. Maybe. I don't know, man. I don't know if I could just like uh, go in there and start murking motherfuckers. Then maybe I, hell, I, I might pay for that privilege. Um. <laughs> well, it's an MMO. You're more likely to get marked the moment you logged in. So yeah. Mm. All right. I think that's All gonna right. do it for the All steam right. stuff. Yeah. Coming up next. Hey, you want to buy a GPU? Well, too bad. No, no new ones coming out. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> I'm going to go cry now. Well, we've been given an order. You lot have spoken. You lot want us to keep doing this. Because for some reason, you think that what we do is uh, worth your time. And wet stinky caches. Thank you all very, very much. We are about to get into the whoring. To our resident whore. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> 
Mm, it's so good. You see, you see, we're we're gonna pull the Nuremberg defense because we're just following orders by instructing you to head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Click the support button. We got all sorts of interesting hyperlinks that you and images you can click on, and then insert your credit card information into to help support us. We even got some Amazon affiliate links, Newegg affiliate links, Humble affiliate links, which apparently we apparently we've raised almost hundred bucks for charity via Woo-hoo. Humble. That's that's a thing. Uh, yeah, so cl- so like I said, go go to that page, click on it, enter some credit card numbers, and hope for the best. You can also head on over to patreoncom slash Gamecast uh, to you know give us some additional money. Uh, we're 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 get- we're getting closer to that Jill goal, creeping ever so close. You get to see uh, Miss Jill Lytics girl on uh, on the Wednesday show that this yes. Patreon campaign also funded. There's all sorts of cool stuff you can get for just like four bucks a month. It's really, really cool. Uh, and I mean, it's only four bucks a month if we put out four shows. If we miss a week, then you don't get charged. It's good stuff. Um, and uh, what, do we, what do we got? Uh, yeah, uh, you, I mean, you can get access to our show notes, all sorts of goodies. All of that stuff is at the Patreon page. Go read it enter your credit card number and so on and so forth but we have another way to support us and that is by being our fuck buddies you can go oh, to yes. our amazon wish list and purchase us some stuff and then you get uh, you get put up against the wall and then frank will have his uh, bony way with you isn't that right Ben? hey man it's a thing it's extravagant stuff we have on our wish list like ups batteries and shit but no um <laughs> Hey man, yeah, you, you can definitely become uh, one of Frank's fuckos. The latest person on there is Arthurin. He picked up the monitor impaler, but you know Amazon, we're going to use that to stack Pedro and Jordan so they can do horrible things to each other in my shot and for some other stuff. Uh, Amazon sent the desk lamp version, glass desk. So kind of we, we got to swap that out. I was worried. I was like Arthurin, man, uh, yeah, you shipped the wrong thing, but it'll it'll be a week. He's like, yeah, 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 whatever. I, I'm on um. Frank Small, right? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, what else? Do, do what you gotta do, man. So. Oh, man, that wall's that was getting a little crowded, too. We might need a new piece yeah. of Bristol board. No, oh, man, that sounds like a horrible idea. Horrible idea. Um, oh, you, you, you know what you should do is put, like, a monitor on the fuck wall, or on, on, the, on the fuck list, and then maybe someone will buy it and get on the new digitized fuck wall. <laughs> Who knows? Let's just get yes, but, buy the new uh, fuck come, wall. Come, come, <laughs> Come come back in one year. No GPU for you. Nope. Not at all, man. Again, uh, a lot of people around the internet, they're like, oh, NVIDIA's launching a new thing. Even uh, OC3D, all this business in our show notes, looks like NVIDIA won't be launching a new GPU at GTC or GTC, to which I retort, again, the fuck would they, man? You know, I, I've seen tons of speculation in the last, you know, two weeks maybe. From people saying it's everything, they're going to do a custom crypto card to it's their new GPU architecture. And uh, listen, motherfuckers, uh, NVIDIA's got this market on lock, and I don't expect them to randomly fart out any new products for just just to do it. I mean, I, I understand that things like the 7, uh, 1070 Ti they just released because it's like, fuck you, we, we, we can even... There's one little piece of the market we don't completely dominate in. Now we do. And that, that's the thing. But they're good right now. I don't think they have any plans on releasing any. Now, then again, I'm sure tomorrow, but by, by the time I'm done rendering this tomorrow, I, they'll announce their new architecture with a custom mining card, right? Yeah. That seems to be what a lot of people are expecting. Uh, honestly, yeah, I'm totally with you on that one vendor not going to be releasing anything anytime soon they may announce something like some specifics uh maybe even some pricing on the volta cards for when they do come out but right now this is just not going to happen and i can see why the internet would be sort of you know fueling the rumor mill because everyone's going well gpus are freaking expensive right now almost as much as RAM, but uh, releasing a new generation doesn't automatically mean that the older generations will lower in price like it used to. Not ever since the mining craze proved that the old cards are still pretty good at computing, so people buy those up too. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, it sucks, but that's the way things are right now. 
<laughs> yeah, what 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 I'm hearing now is I'm still stuck waiting another year before I even think about buying a new video card. Yeah, it would be it would be nice if uh, Nvidia maybe uh, took the took the time to actually release a new card. You know what? Maybe maybe, maybe AMD is going to pull a summer and be like, oh hey, mm -hmm. we have we have an entire we have an entire year of Nvidia not releasing any new products. Let's come out the gate with like I don't know Vega Two Electric Boogaloo that actually works and has some like decent open source drivers backing it. That would be mm -hmm. that would be a nice little pipe dream. It would make it would make Monster Cam and cream his freaking jeans. But mm -hmm. yeah, this, one this, that this, sucks this for mining. Part of the course. Yeah, that's. I, I mean, this, well, this is what we that's what we expected though. I mean, it's not like you can even afford one right now, anyway. So nope. I personally would like Nvidia to release. Like a crazy cheap, crazy stupid cheap mining only card with no video outputs or anything like that. And for, right, because I went and looked at a 10, I really want a 1070 Ti for all the wrong reasons. I want access to a new NV encoder profile to make our video better. That's why I want one. But I'm figuring, you know, I, I know because somebody's always like, why don't you just get a 1060? It's like, well, if I'm getting a new card, might as well get something slightly better than my 980, right? Yeah. And, those things are like 800 boxes. Like that is like, because fuck you range. I'm not touching, not even considering, not even, that's too much to even put on our damn wish list, man. I was like, I, I would be genuinely cross with anyone who picked that up at that price. Um, oh man. Remember, remember when we picked up our nine eighties for like $500? Yeah. No, that, that, that was, that was a time. Okay, Feral uh, yeah. Video and Streaming Guidelines. Uh, make you play on this. Uh, if you're going to be streaming some Feral stuff and you want that Feral love, uh, you're welcome to create video uh, content featuring Feral games. Uh, they just got some things. If they plan on sharing your game, your live stream, or anything like that that you're doing, they got a couple of rules, man. Uh, mainly your own content. Uh, feature the game being played on supported computers only, which I kind of get on Twitter. It's like, you need to clarify that. That... that <laughs> that, uh, that's a broad damn statement no because it's like wait a minute so supported computers only if i'm going to play alien insulation do i got to be running you know Ubuntu 1204 lts like it says on the steam <laughs> store I'm like uh no 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 i kind of knew what they meant but they I just wanted to put that in there make sure it's not inflammatory that's some youtube and twitch type typing right there because that means we get to decide that on what day of the week it is it's not behind a paywall, so don't do anything special for your patrons and don't breach copyright laws. So this doesn't, like when I first looked at this, I was like, wait a minute, is this your streaming guidelines? No, nay, this is only if they're going to share mm -hmm. the stream. If you're that you're going to get hearing. a retweet or a reshare to their Facebook. It was like, oh, look, this person is playing the game that we ported. So I guess if I stream Dirt Rally from my laptop and using KDE Neon, I wouldn't get a feral retweet. Mm. I mean, and then that's the thing. Supported really means like Ubuntu users get the promotion. And I, I understand why they're doing it, right? They're trying to eliminate random the random herc and jerk from other distros and whatnot. But a lot of their players are gaming on non-Ubuntu OSs. And I would really, given, given how like shitty Canonical is, and their practices, I would really like them to stop being the default Linux distribution that people go to. Maybe maybe show the sort of breadth of other non-Ubuntu OSs. Because uh, you know, Linux gaming is a broad spectrum. Except mm. don't promote Arch users. They don't need they don't need to be <laughs> any louder than they currently are. Hey man, no. are Arch tears fucking delicious, son. Mm. Mm, tasty. <laughs> Salty. Well, oh, delicious, delicious Linuxy games, and there's a whole new bundle of them. With chances are, you already have like 50% of the games included with this one. But hey, it's there. Uh, and if you don't have them, or maybe you were like me, waiting for Dreamfall chapters to come on some stupid sale or get into a really nice bundle. Here it is. It comes uh, at the $15 level. It's uh, Dreamfall Chapters in Torment Tides of Numenera. If you pay more than the average, you also get Xenonauts, Age of Wonders 3, Wasteland 2, and the Shadowrun Hong Kong Extended Edition. Pretty good deal right there. And the at the base price, as long as you pay a uh, dollar or more, you get Steam Keys for Broken Sword 5, Shadowrun Returns, and uh, Shadowrun Dragonfall. It's just the Tesla effect. It's a really, it doesn't it's, seem to have a Linux version. 
Oh yeah, no, it's it's a really good deal. There's like a lot of like really good RPGs in there. The sh- the the entirety of Shadowrun Returns, if you pay like eight dollars, mm-hmm. is fucking worth it. Period. Uh, Xenonauts is kind of like a OG XCOM clone, and I yeah, I, I totally uh, say you should buy the fifteen dollar bundle because t- Tides yeah. of Numenera. If you if you like Planescape, if you like Planescape Torment, you will like Tides of Numenera. Uh, also, you should totally use our affiliate link, you guys. I'm not done shilling. <laughs> never ends. Give us money. No. Do it. I want to feel it on my body. It's definitely an awesome thing. And uh, I looked at it. Most of these games, not my jam. Uh, I almost pulled the trigger on their monthly bundle because a uh, hippitus hoppitus motherfucker was in there. Um, <laughs> Luigi mm. Roo or whatever the hell it's called. And uh, the Luigi rabbit Rose. game. Yeah. <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> Luigi. That's, a, that's a show title. That one. Like, Luigi. Somebody, and, somebody, um, Luigi. I almost gave him 12 quid because that game's normally like 40 bucks. And it's just a poo game that never goes on sale. I just wanted it for the train wreck it is. Maybe to stream it, but nah. I uh, ended up couldn't do it. But uh, Scum VM, man, Summer Code. Let's give them a plug because they do, yeah, the- they got a cool engine and uh, they want to do some cool stuff. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Scum VM mm-hmm. is one of those sort of long-suffering, long-standing projects that's been enabling... Uh, game play or like native gameplay on Linux, mm-hmm. and that is really cool. Um, there, if, if you've if you've seen like the the Lucas Arts re-releases on Steam or on GOG, they're they're using Scum VM. Like it is a solid project. They're uh, looking for student volunteers to help them out with their summer of code. You can check that all out. They got a big old wiki page and some uh, blog posts that explain what need to be done uh and yeah no just because we we love game preservation right Mm -hmm. well we're we're gonna Mm -hmm. gonna be talking about that a little bit more at the end of the section but game preservation is super important enabling people to play games on the platform they want is super important children go help them out get a cool thing to put on your resume that that that, that's it's a it's a public open source project and you'd be like yeah i'm a contributor to scum vm that's gonna look good on i don't know some entry level data entry job thing yeah. <laughs> hey man i seriously if i was back in charge of hiring and shit like that i was like oh shit you helped out scum vm hmm cool uh <laughs> that's mm. bonus points you I, are definitely getting some geek bonus points if uh the recruiter person I, who's looking at your resume sees that oh mm-hmm. uh, hell i i i actually recommended hiring someone because they were an active editor on the arch wiki because they're one of the people who actually contribute to the to the documentation hmm so, yeah, cool. there you go. All right, let's talk about something you uh, know about and I don't fucking care about. <laughs> Absolutely. It's Pokemon. <laughs> oh my god. Everyone knows I love the Pokermans. I like making cute little cuddly creatures cockfight for my amusement and then murdering them when they fail me. But this is OP Mammon Lazuli, which is a open source implementation of a Pokemon style game, a pocket monster style game. As it were, it has support for adding your own custom mons. Uh, if you, uh, which basically means that, yeah, this is going to be a bunch of, uh, people's fucking crappy fake on and yeah, it's, it's, I, I got it built. It builds, they have a, they have a nice little build and run script that'll do the compile. It uh, doesn't actually require much in the way of dependencies. So away you go, you can play the game. The controls are a little fucky. Um, but it looks like a fucking Pokemon game. Um, what I didn't is get too far a, into it. I, I know nothing about the Pokemons. Is it like a clone or yep. is it uh, its own thing? Does it use like the original game data it, or what? No, no. It, so it is its own thing because the, the, the deal with that is you can copyright the presentation of the rules of a game, but you can't necessarily copyright the rules of the game. Hmm. So they're, they've essentially like sort of built the Pokemon engine from the ground up. They're using their own assets. Um, you, can, you can theoretically take Pokemon that exist in other game and games and import them into here. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. There's nothing physically stopping you from doing that. Hmm. So uh, it's, yeah, it's, an, it's a neat little project, though. Is the differing presentation enough to dodge the Nintendo lawyers? Should this get any amount of attention at all? Uh, it, they're it, not using any. They're not using any resources uh, from from the Nintendo games. So I think these guys are in the clear. Also, mm-hmm. they're sm- they're way too small potatoes. A two. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean. I mean. A, AM. AM. Two are was sp- straight up stepping on the toes of a of like a project that uh Nintendo that was, was actually literally be released and that's why yeah they, <laughs> yeah because because they, they straight up released Metroid 2 re-released Metroid mm-hmm. 2 so that that's why they killed that project 
Alien vs. Predator. Uh, it's got it's been enhanced, man, with cutscene support, new screen resolutions. It has, and and some uh, SDL two goodness as well. So uh, you may remember uh, we 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 got we got this guy Icky Butts. Uh, he uh, occasionally makes tools that helps people uh, create cross-platform games. And uh, this is a, a, an unofficial SDL2 rewrite for the Linux version of Alien vs. Predator Gold, which uh, Icky Butts did originally port. And I guess this is kind of necessary, since Mr. Alert kind of slowed down the development on SDLCL. Uh, stuff like this is going to be, mm -hmm. or is going to need to be done. You're going to need to um, actually go back and rewrite individual games or reverse engineer original games and then rip out all the SDL bindings, replace them with up-to-date SDL2 bindings, as opposed to having a drop-in replace library that automatically works. Come back, Mr. Alert. Please finish <laughs> this project. Help help me, Mr. Alert Kenobi. You are my only hope. Um, but but yeah, it, it, it has some cutscene support, so you can check it out. You can build it. Uh, you still need you still need the OG uh, assets from the game. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 about it. You can play. You can play Aliens vs Predator Gold at 4K. Have fun. Yeah. Uh, they don't actually support 4K proper yet. They only support uh, 1366 by 768. That is Ew. officially supported. You can do some scaling. Uh, you can do some scaling up to 4K. Uh, but it is going to look bad. Uh, SDL2 support is experimental because it. Uh, this is very much based on the Aculus port, and that was running SDL 1.2, and SDL 2 wasn't really out at the time, so, yeah. Hmm. It, it, it didn't yep. exist at the time, is what you're saying. Yeah. Hey, man, if that's your jam, <laughs> um, your jam, your jam, get out there, play it around, now you can watch the videos. Um, so, the, the, everyone can agree on this next topic, Pedro. Wall of text. Uh, no, no, it's the uh, game preservation. Yes, like Jordan mentioned earlier, Everyone here seems to be in favor of the idea of video game preservation. And someone at uh, Eurogamer wrote an article uh, titled The Retro Gaming Industry Could Be Killing Video Game Preservation. And, okay, uh, clarification, what he calls retro gaming industry is actually the gray market of emulator boxes, the not-so-legal ones. But misleading article title uh, aside... Uh, as well as the Super Nintendo Classic and NES Classic and all those other things. Yeah, that, those that are actually the up. official ones. Those are the official ones, and they're like two examples. Uh, but there's tons of people selling like uh, generic boxes that can play NES, uh, Mega Drive, Master System, SNES. Basically all the cartridge game off of one box. Yeah, that's not going to fly. And... Even if you take uh, the what the title is actually trying to convey, yeah, there is definitely some of that. As long as there are people fueling the murky legal waters of emulators and whatnot, the big companies like Nintendo, like Sega, like all the other AAA publishers that put out games for those platforms, they're not going to see the need for preservation because those games are still very much active. Legal or not, they are still very much active. Hmm. Yeah. Well, man. so here, here's here's the other thing. Uh, no, because the, the 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 broken state of IP law um, essentially means that no company will ever actually give a shit about media preservation because uh, all all companies do care about is profitable IP. So what they're going to do is they're going to take old ROMs, they're going to write their own emulation software, and throw it on little Raspberry Pi and ship it as a brand new hot product that people. Will literally line up at midnight to buy. But I have coworkers mm -hmm. who actually lined up for the Super Nintendo Classic and the NES Classic when that came out last year. Um, I think I think the article is a wee full of crap though, because uh, compatible hardware and virtual consoles are all well and good, but there are a lot of well loved, less popular games out there <laughs> that cartridges uh, for them will um, go will fetch for upwards of like a couple hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And no one's going to be pay paying that to play uh, a childhood game. Uh, additionally, it is infeasible to believe for a hot second that relying on whatever amount of cartridges survive over the years of abuse, neglect, burying them in the desert like mm -hmm. so much ET, um, will actually allow these pieces of software to be preserved. The best way to do it is to make a make a rip 
or uh, rip, rip the rip the ROM from the cartridge and play it in an emulator like Jen's. And I think that honestly, there's space for both of these things because people still, still there will always be a secondary market because you got to remember Nintendo, Sega, whoever make no money off of these gray market boxes. They don't care about nope. it uh, because they, they, they would rather you buy it on their uh, virtual console platform or PlayStation store and then rebuy it when the new version of the console comes out because fuck you. Um, mm -hmm. But there, but there is space for this and emulation to exist because tracking down Super Nintendo functional Super Nintendos and NESs and Genesises is going to become uh, increasingly more difficult as time goes on. Uh, boxes like these will facilitate people to play their original copies, but emulation will actually preserve the software. Period. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's currently work being done with a bill. I believe it's trying to get through in California, way out in there that. Pushing for stuff like this to keep it open. They said one of the biggest uh, sticky bits that they're running into is with multiplayer games, online multiplayer games mm -hmm. that have died, like the Matrix Online and stuff like that, for, where there's exemptions where people can at least come in and back it up, even if they do it in like a closed, clean room environment, just to say that it is archived somewhere. Because we've seen time and time again where, uh, you know, a game that might be a decade old, like, hey, we would like the source and the company's like yeah we, we would hook, hook you up with that but we, we've lost the source to that a long time ago and uh but even with like the dmca you're legally allowed to make you know dump a cartridge or a copy a game you're just not allowed to as long sell as it. you own it mm -hmm. and only use it yourself yep. don't go around sharing it yes no i also will say this like legally licensed sega has definitely hoarded themselves out over the year just like mm -hmm. most of the sega things that you see with the pack-in games are licensed from Sega because Sega is just mm -hmm. like make, make make it rain and uh, you, you can put thirty games on there or anything like that. So uh, before we get out of here, uh, uh, Tailblazers, Trailblazers, Arcade Racing, something I love. Hey man, it's the Red Star of Blazy Trails. This looks pretty good, and if that's Unity, mm -hmm. I would be really impressed. I kind of kind of feels more like UE four maybe or UE three possibly. Um, <laughs> It definitely has a bit of the rocket cars going for it. Yeah, yeah and, and you're not squids, but you paint tracks. That's like one of yep. the mechanics, and you boost it's on your Wipeout uh, mixed with uh, this, uh, you're a kid, Splatoon. you're a squid game. Yeah, Splatoon, yes. Yeah. Splatoon. Yeah, Splatoon. Yeah. It's a fresh new co-op racing game with an innovative on-track game mechanic. Yeah, you paint tracks and boost on shit. Uh, three, 3v3, three three, uh, dynamically change racing lines. True co-op, all this good stuff. Play online. They got a bunch of pictures. They don't say fuck or all about a release date, but here's what this is going to be releasing on Switch, Xbone, PS4, the Fruit, and the Penguin, which would make me all the happy as long as as soon as it comes out for Windows, uh, then it's like, yeah, well, we've got to focus our development right now on PS4 and Xbox and Switch. And um, we we never end up with the oh, ab ab Linux version. Ab absolutely, that's like that's like the death knell of any sort of like multiplayer game on Linux. It's like, hey, yeah, yeah, we're we're releasing it, except we've released it for PC or for Windows, Xbox, and PlayStation Four. And then two years later, oh yeah, here's your Linux port. And or the time, or even better, they're yeah. like, what, what 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 Linux port? We never say anything about Linux port. Look look look, <laughs> poosh, smoke bomb. <laughs> Well, they do have the penguin, and we have the penguin on video now, so we can present that. It's like, Motherfucker, yeah. that hasn't stopped anybody from disappearing nope. penguins, man. They're just like, what? No, no, we, we took that down. Uh, no, no, and, and, and yeah, Project instead cars. they make a video about... Yeah, and, and, and instead they make a video about fucking penguins. Mm -hmm. Oh, Project Cars 2. Oh, no, Project Cars 2 will totally come to Linux. No, no, here, here's the bullshit they did with that. They're like, okay, as soon as we're done with the Project Cars 2 engine, then we're going to go back and use the Project Cars 1 data to rebuild the game in Project Cars 2 just for... And even mm -hmm. when they're saying that, and I'm like, the sad thing is, guys, here's the sad thing. Some motherfuckers are buying this bullshit you're spitting on. I'm not. Never have. Uh, you're fucking lying to your customers, and uh, fuck you for doing that, buddy. Yeah. Um, Let's get out of here, baby. All right, coming up next, we discuss what is best in life, which is usually to crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentations of the penguins.
You know, everyone seems to love Lovecraft, but no one really seems to acknowledge the fact that the guy was like a horrible, awful racist. Except for this game, where there's just nonstop white everywhere. This is Canarium. It's from Zoetrope uh, Interactive. It's built on Unreal Engine 4. Yay, another UE4 game. What is it? Uh, Canarium is a Chilean Lovecraftian game which follows a gripping story involving four scientists and their endeavor to challenge what we normally consider to be the absolute limits of nature. Inspired by Lovecraft's novella At the Mountains of Madness, but largely set after the original story. Dev sent us some keys for this. Thanks a lot. This is the chair QA edition where we take a game like Conarium and we run it through its paces. We uh, play it a little. We give we get around in a little conversation here, give our thoughts. Uh, maybe do a little QA that the developers neglected to do before pushing this out to production. And uh, give it a chair rating. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. And we got our categories. Oh, Doom makes with the working. Shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let us kick off the chair QA edition with the with the with the most important thing. Did it work? Hmm. <laughs> then, hey man, uh, gotta love the chair position where we get to tear tear apart things that uh, make other people angry. Apparently, uh, so over here on Humbuntu seventeen ten running back reverted to the four fourteen dot twenty one whatever it is this week. That kernel. Latest, nope, not the latest NVIDIA drivers, because they have issues too. 387. On the Ryzen 1700, powered by 980, displayed at UHD, which ultimately would be the preferred way to play this game, because it's Unreal Engine 4, and um, basically your only option is UHD or windowed, because you're not going to do 1080p full screen to save your damn life. That needs to be fixed. That's an issue. And it's kind of sad for something like this. It's atmospheric and all that. So I'm playing in a 1080p window on a UHD monitor. But that said, at 1080p, man, this thing runs like stink, man. That's a brilliant, brilliant thing to see on Unreal Engine 4 because it's not known to be terribly performant. And we were talking in the pre-show or the pre-pre-super shows and patrons check that business out tomorrow. Um, no texture pop-in for Unreal Engine 4, which... Mm -hmm. It caused me to go back and like double check that this was UE4. It turns out it was, but yeah, uh, couldn't Steam overlay can't take screenshots. It's like a damn checklist of known issues with UE4 that can they are fixable, but they weren't fixed, Brad. So I'm going to throw you on a just a straight two on that. Your game technically works. You can play it if you are persistent enough. If you're kind of new to Linux and yeah, the, the, there's a whole lot of refund button up in this if you don't know your way around stuff like this and you're not doing it on a daily basis. Yeah, like the man says, this thing runs fine in windowed mode. Uh, the one thing I did notice on uh, Fedora 24 or 26 64 bit with the i7 6700K and the GTX 980 is that, um, man, I just completely lost my train of thought there. Uh, <laughs> right, no, it, it, uh, it, in in full screen mode, it actually runs worse in 1080p than it does in 4K, which is some sort of UE4 moon sorcery. I'm not 100% sure how that actually works. But yeah, I, I played along for the first little bit of my uh, playthrough of this game, uh, checking along at about 27 frames a second. Then I'm like, oh yeah, you can put this in windowed mode and run fine. And all of a sudden, yeah, like well above 60 FPS. I mean, I got to play it in any bitty window on my 4K monitor, but it is what it is. Three cheers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you see, some games, they start on the wrong monitor, looking at you, Unity. Uh, but that's usually just a keyboard uh, combo away from a workaround. It's still shit, but it, there's a workaround for it. This game, if you have two audio devices, it'll pick the wrong one, because I have the headset that I do for my games, because it sounds real nice. And I have the speakers on the monitor, which are shit, that I usually just use while I'm listening to a YouTube video, going around the place, doing other things. And this game just was hell-bent on using the speakers on the monitor. I had to disable the HDMI audio to get it to come through the headset. That is shit. And that gets you dinged a chair. Mm -hmm. Now, out of curiosity, did you try changing the default sync and pulse audio? Oh, yes. Doesn't right. respect it. <laughs> All right, well, that's two chairs for Mix with the Working. How about the shiny and the sounds? Because I think, I think this game gets should get a lot of props for its sound design. 
because it, it it's really good. Like they they, they yeah. nailed the creepy noises. They're, you can you can hear like the building you're in shift as you're just kind of standing around. You go, what the fuck is that? It's it's really well done. Um, almost makes up for the fact that there is so much reading involved in this game. <laughs> oh my god! And um, all the indoor areas really do look kind of like stock UE4 environment demos. Um, so it's, it's it, I feel there are some reused default assets in here, but it all looks good because it's UE4. Um, unlike the other UE4 game where it was just like, oh, or what was it, Steam Worlds or Steam Ball? No, yeah, something Steam like that. something. Steam, Steam Ball, where like it, the, yeah, that was all nice and like UE4 graphics, but they're kind, of, it still kind of looked crappy. This actually looks relatively nice. I don't really, I'm not really a big fan of like the fog of war killing the render distance. Mm -hmm. uh, I get why they're doing it to make things more mysterious, but it's just like, shit, did I come from there? I don't remember because I wasn't paying attention. So now I got to go through mm -hmm. and reorient myself. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it looks good. I'll give it, I'll give it three chairs. Mm -hmm. Pedro. Yeah. Uh, the voice acting is really bad. Like, really bad. The first thing you hear before you even get to the atmospheric creepy noises, the voice acting is awful. The moment the dude gets up from the chair and it's the amnesia thing, it's like, oh, look, you just woke up and you don't remember anything. Um, he sounds so stilted. Uh, it, it is a mood killer, in my opinion, because, again, the rest of the game really good ambience noise really good like background just the very subtle things going on in the background very very good sounds and that just kills all the atmosphere uh the outside bits the very few bits that you actually get to go outside they're really nice the insides be it like the station where you start or the temple area or the ruins area as you progress through the game they they look so generic. There there's almost no visual storytelling whatsoever. In fact, most of the storytelling, as Jordan already mentioned, is conveyed through walls of text. But more on that later. Mm. Ben? Sound design's pretty good. Sufficiently creepy. If that's your thing, it didn't play the Mount Meow Mix in the background. That would have fucked with me way too much. So thanks for not giving me nightmares. Yeah, I agree with you. A shitload of reading, Lovecraftian inspired motherfucker didn't write pamphlets. So. Kind of expected that the indoors, they look like a uh, stock UE4. Uh, but mm, again, nothing wrong with that. It's not lazily done. It's not Unity Assetville. Um, <laughs> let's see. I think it, yeah, I mean, it really does look good, but it does look a little plasticky because Unreal Engine 4, I've seen this with almost every game we've touched. Everything's just a little too fucking shiny in the texture department on that. And everything does come across just a little wee bit plasticky. Uh, the vo voice acting, man, that dude voice, oh Jesus, that is like next level bad. That is like me not caring bad, which is it, it, bad. It, it's Marky Mark in the happening. It's like, are you lying? <laughs> are you lying my lemon drink boy? What? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's, it's like that. I don't tell you one of the downsides is this game does rely a lot on the audio, but I, I spent my time in it with the headphones off. And the downside with a game like this, it really for the atmosphere it relies on your environment, which is done well. Uh, is you, you're just going through a walking simulator at that point when you don't have that uh, stimulation going on like, oh shit, what was that spooky noise and all that business? But it does what it sets out to, man. I can agree with you guys. We're going to give that a solid three all the way down real quick. Jordan, how does this thing control, baby? I mean, you, you, you blazed, you, you, the, and that, that works all fine. The one weird annoying bit that I'm going to ding at a chair for just because it's a little unintuitive where right click is your journal and mm -hmm. then space is your inventory. It's when I hit space, I expect to jump. Okay, did you That's, did you discover your space was you? I, I discovered space was jump when I was in the area when you first get the hatchet with the plants because I was trying to suicide myself and jump over the railings. Uh, and I was uh, like, wait, oh, I have an inventory. All right. Yeah, I I, I got a crank that I'm trying to like uh, crank some elevator with. Mm -hmm. uh, any anyways, uh, yeah. So I'll give it I'll give it three chairs for uh, the controls. They they work. Yeah, for me, There's nothing to complain about. It's where it's washed. Everything worked. It was aside from the space bar or the jump button, 
<laughs> uh, being inventory, everything else was logically laid out. I, I didn't. We've all played this game more, but then the fun section. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, I'll give it a solid four. It does what it's supposed to. I have one sticking point with the controls, and that sprinting is about as fast as a moderately brisk walk. I walk faster at 7 a.m. while I'm sleepy, walking out of the house to catch the bus than the protagonist in this game sprints. No. Three chairs. Mm. All right, well, that's, that's three chairs for controls. Let's put a bow on it. Pedro, did you have fun playing okay. this game? Uh, no. Uh, I went into this game expecting... Penumbra, or maybe even Soma, uh, I got layers of fear instead. I don't really enjoy the sequence of locked doors with random interspersing of visual noise to indicate, oh no, this is the bit where you should be scared, no. Uh, And you're not really in any danger, either. Um, The developers had to account for your character being too still short of standing still while he moves, so the quote-unquote monsters in the latter parts of the games are the game meh are all just as slow. And the puzzles basically boil down to find key, use key on door. It, even the atmosphere, the atmosphere is pretty good. It just gets killed the moment someone opens their fat mouth to gab something. Uh, And there's always so much text to read. It kind of makes me wonder, if you were trying to pass off your HP Lovecraft fanfic, why not make it an ebook instead? It's instead it's just another mediocre puzzle game with a quote unquote horror theme. Then what yeah. what'd you think? Um listen, don't try to frictional if you ain't gonna go full frictional. Seriously, don't. Either I can interact with every goddamn thing in the fucking game or nothing. Don't don't like <laughs> give me this. You did a really bad job of that, too, because, like, some drawers, they, the same fucking drawers or same fucking cabinet, same model used for these. Some of them you can open, some of them you can't. I'm not saying they were even locked. You don't have that damn option. Um, as I was saying a minute ago, we've all played this game before. And you know what? We're going to play it again. This is, oh, look, you wake up alone. Go walk around and find, figure out what the ooky spooky mysterious bullshit is. Um, Canarium, you know, it doesn't really bring anything new to the table. It is kind of wicked buggy in certain areas uh, where Jordan's at or in that area where you're getting the uh, elevator crank handle thingy. I've had it straight up glitch on me twice there where I had to go to their forums where everyone else was like, yeah, game breaking bug. (laughs) And I was like, oh, okay, let's reload. And I was able to get my way through it. Listen, guys, it's not a lazily done game, but, you know, as I just said, man, the wake up alone figure shit out genre has been played the hell out. And I think for 20 20 what stinky American caches, you can do better things like buy, buy the frictional bundle or something and, you know, <laughs> go back to where this shit started and got good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. Just one on that. Yeah, I mean, and like it, like it's, it's been said already, it's another oopy spoopy generic walking simulator. And there are a few puzzles. Sometimes you got to like do that frequency matching thing or find a key or find an object to open things up that are. And, and then sometimes the game glitches out and doesn't work. I didn't. I didn't think to like reload and try that thing again. I I actually started going back. I'm like, maybe I missed a fucking item. Maybe this is the wrong crank. No, apparently it's the right crank. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I like the subject matter. I like sort of the follow up to Mountains of Madness. I like the whole H.P. Lovecraft dream realm thing where you can like sort of project yourself into like other realities and explore and fuck around and then awful shit happens because what hot science rocks <laughs> those. Those damn immigrants, according to Lovecraft. Anyways, it, they're, they're, they're the ones at fault. Yeah, there's so there's like lots of cool little story bits in here that I kind of like that are that I, th- I think they got like the Lovecraftian angle down, but there's just no gameplay to support it. It just becomes an oopy spoopy walking simulator. Oh, I got to go solve a puzzle and walk through some doors. And, oh, there's a sound. Oh, no, there's a there's a blurry man walking. I'm going to go kick okay, him in the balls. Did, do, you, do you have this issue? I saw a blurry man. I immediately dart towards him. I was chasing. No, I, well, no, I, I see ever, ever, ever since I started doing like these horror games with you, Ven, mm-hmm. I have taken the Ven Stone approach. <laughs> Trade the trademark Ven Stone approach of, ooh, scary monster. I'm gonna give it a hug because mm-hmm. it immediately kills whatever tension you have. Plus, you know, if like, oh, you can actually die in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
the it's boring is what it is i can't bring myself to play it because i just don't care there's a there's like a little bit of tickliness in like the storytelling but I, I, I don't know hp like the whole hp lovecraft thing is about exploring the frailty and smallness of humanity and this game just makes me want to take a nap one mm. share which tallies yeah. it out to one share for the fun ball it all up into a little crumply shit ball and you get two chairs Listrider for conarium hey you man got anything anything you want to add before yeah we um, I, I got killed by a fucking plant that's my verdict <laughs> I, I mean tobacco will do that to you man you gotta stop smoking yeah no it's it, it could have been better it could have been penumbra it could have been soma soma was a for all intents and purposes a very atmospheric walking simulator with a lot of puzzles and it worked it was a really good game this on the other hand isn't yeah alright uh, put a bow on it Coming up next, we got some hate mail from Bangladesh. That's new. Well, that was disappointing. But hey, here's something else that's disappointing, or maybe... What's the opposite of disappointing? Appointing? No. (laughs) Uh, Uh, I I was going to say your penis, but whatever. Mm, Penis. (laughs) Uh, I can't remember what you said. Anus spelled backwards is penis. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> but yeah, if you uh, enjoyed the time you spent with us, well, th- this will be a little bit disappointing because we're at the end of the show. But hey, let us know what it was that you loved the most or what it was that you hated the most in our contact page on linuxgamecast.com. It's easy. You just fill in the blanks. You pick uh, LGC Weekly from the little drop down thing. Or if you'd like Jordan to help you with your relationship, you can uh, ask him for some relationship advice. There's also a couple other categories, LWDW for that Wednesday show, What We Do. And if you're a game developer looking to send us some keys, send us a game for us to play. Make sure all three of us can play it, because if not, we're going to make fun of you. Okay, so uh, someone had a bit of a rant. Mm-hmm. Man. Uh, yeah, tr- well, you, want, you want to take this one? Oh, I'll take it. Uh, Trugosaurus, uh, you know him, you love him, from Discord and Shad Realm. Uh, he's like, he's a man, I, I got another rant for you lot. It's like my Xbox controller wired died. Now, I, I'm trying to play third person games on my Steamy controller. Hitman, Mad Max, Shadow, Hordor, Tomb Raider, all made fucking miserable by the Areola controller. Um, with twin sticks, he's a headshot master. That's nothing you should ever admit in public, man. Those words mm-hmm. don't make sense. Uh, with Areola. I can't even control the fuck mother and camera correctly. I've tried fuckulating the settings every which way, including the community recommended configs, but unless someone has any suggestions, I can only see two solutions, neither of which involve beavers. Um, one, start playing third person games with a mouse and keyboard the right way. Two, mm-hmm. buy another Xbox controller exclamation point. I want to like you, Valve, but Fuck. Now, what? What? He, what I, I want to clarify something because you, you made you made a little mistake there. What he's saying is third person games, not first person games. Mm-hmm. Third person games, absolutely play them with a controller. That's what they're there for. First person games, use this. Uh, thing. You filthy this heathen! Thing. <laughs> this uh, thing. As, as someone who's been playing games on a PC for a long time, play third person games with your mouse and keyboard. It's fine. Hey man, maybe once we'll they have a sit back experience. Like, you know, big picture mode? <laughs> eh, yeah. If that's the case, yeah, you could probably learn to uh, areola properly. You can, but I, I feel him on that because, listen, get, getting used to the Steam controller, there's a learning curve. It doesn't matter. See, the biggest issue I found, version 2 of the Steam controller, what it absolutely fucking tootly needs is for, you know, your mouse, right? The Mm -hmm. right side, what you need up here is a dial to press up and down to on the fly adjust the fucking sensitivity on this bitch. (laughs) Because you can never get that dialed in just so when you're doing it in the configuration. I was like, I want to be in the game. You know, same same thing my gerbil has on it. It's got, you know, three or four Mm -hmm. buttons to go up on the uh, 
DPI responsiveness or whatever, that would yep. be a welcome addition because yeah, most of the default configs, like you people, I don't understand how you play because you got to start wheeling on it to get it to rotate your character or something like that, which I yeah, understand that, with a twin stick, that's not an issue because stick. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of sticks, uh, if you don't mind a little bit of compatibility issues here or there, DualShock 4, mm -hmm. or also the price tag because it's like an $80 controller. Right. DualShock oh, yeah. 4, solid choice. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I'd, I'd say just get another Xbox controller. Get, mm -hmm. Just just bite the bullet. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, eh. we, 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 it's, it's time for some bracket ball. Bracket ball? <laughs> bracket ball. This, this next one's from Orin, and he says, Ven Senpai, do you take a look at the tournament bracket thingy? I page Pedro and empty previously. Don't know if they told you about it, but here it is. And he provided a link, and then he has a link to his GitHub. And I don't know. Uh, the, or no, no, no. Pedro <laughs> or empty, neither of them told me the person who's responsible for going. Okay, I can incorporate that into that. Nope, they didn't tell me a fucking thing. You want to know why? I don't. Uh, not talking for empty, but for me, I when Orn sent me that, I figured, yeah, it's probably already told Ven, so I didn't think anything of it. Well, <laughs> anyway, I'm still throwing both of you under the bus. Um, <laughs> yeah, here it is, and it works. We'll be able to do a bracketing system. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to set something up like a real. Peru, yeah, that's supposed to be Peru. Bracket. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. It's open source. It's on GitHub. That'll be in the show notes, and it, it'll it'll make your life better. We we can use that for multiple things. It'll be cool. We'll find yeah. ways to break it. New and exciting ways to break it. More importantly, um, now empty. You're not. You're an adorable asshole, just like everyone else, including myself. But oh, I do. He's the cutest asshole. He is. Hey, just look at him all puckered up. Because on that bombshell, it's time to cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where we are. Uh, maybe we'll do an early show next week. I'm not 100% on my schedule. I'll know Tuesday if I'm going to be able to pull that off. Uh, and then I'll have to check with Jordan and Pedro. I don't know. Next time I get a chance to talk to him. Who knows? Find me at Vinstone on Twitter. Vinstone on Google. Just type that shit in. It'll be all up in your face. I am not the cutest asshole, but I am a moderately attractive sphincter of some other kind. Uh, I am Jordan Swung. You can find me at Running Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Swung on Google, plus, and my weekend's clear, so I can do an early show next week. Yeah. And I am the kind of asshole you know from his peristaltic movements alone. Not entirely sure what that means, but I am Peter Mathos. You can find me at Anaconda 4 on Twitter, or plus Peter Mathos on Google+. Plus. So, uh, did, did we we learn anything this week, guys? <laughs> Any chance? No. I learned the word peristaltic, but I'm not entirely sure what it means. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I learned that Pedro is pretty much the avatar of Crohn's disease. Hey, man, Crohn's disease gets he... shit done like these credits. <laughs> ah, the wave like muscular contractions and tubular structures. Okay, so. Eh. Yeah, that's basically... The rectum you. is a t tubular structure, right? Yeah, it's just you arguing <laughs> on the internet, that's all that is. <laughs> that see, I... see, Pedro Mateus is not a cute asshole. <laughs> <laughs> never claimed to be. I, I never stated that. You're just not. Yeah. Again, how is that news to anyone? Well, it is news, because most people don't care enough to even know that. That works Fair too. Point. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we're just giving people information that they've actively attempted to avoid. It's us. It's our responsibility. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Undoing years service. of therapy by Jordan Swung. It is a public service announcement from Linux Gamecast about who is the cute butthole and who isn't the cute butthole. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, empty is a cute butthole. We've established that. Hey, but he's got a little beard. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's a cute little fuzzy butthole. So some, sometimes you gotta trim a bit of shit out of there. It's like Jeremy Clarkson, but uh... <laughs> uh, I like to think about now our dingleberries just hanging from the no. five dudes. <laughs>